Thanks for joining us today, Niner fans, as we talk women's basketball once again with head coach Kara Consuegra. In an effort to put an end to this past season and look forward to next year, we'll only touch on a few highlights because otherwise we'll be here all day listening to all the accomplishments and achievements made by the 2012-13 Charlotte women's basketball program. So without further ado, let's get started with the head coach, Kara Consuegra. It's been almost a month since the season has ended. Have you had any time to catch your breath? <laughs> um, not really. I mean, maybe a... Uh... Maybe a few days after we finished playing, we gave the team um, about 12 days off for them to rest and recover, which they needed after us playing so deep into March. And then we got going uh, right after that, starting back up with workouts again. Uh, looking back at the season, how do you put in the word your thoughts on everything that was accomplished? Um, man, that's a tough question. I would say um, more than anything, we're just proud. I'm just proud of our team. Um, you know, a lot of people want to give credit to a lot of different people for the type of season that we had but I certainly think that most of the credit if not all the credit goes to our players uh, they bought in they worked really hard um, they cared about our team and what we wanted to accomplish and um, it, everything fed off them and so I'm just so proud of the accomplishments that they've had as individuals and as a team and uh, really happy that they've been able to leave their mark as one of the best teams to ever play here at Charlotte. Three players who helped put the season on their backs this season were the seniors, Amanda Dow, Jay Forney, Jennifer Haley, who believe it's the winningest class in program history. You were only their coach for two years, but what about them made your job easier? I think the thing about them that, that made my job easier is that they, um, they bought in and uh, they believed in my vision and, and our staff's vision and, and what we needed out of them. And uh, we stretched them. We, we pushed them. And we needed them to become leaders for this team this year, which I would say that all, all three weren't particularly comfortable doing. But they believed in us, and they, they um, understood that it was necessary for us to have a good year, and they were willing to do whatever it took. Um, they really taught our team a will to win. They played like seniors should play, you know, with a chip on their shoulder, with an with a un, unrelenting will to want to get win games. And, you know, when you have players that play like that, you know, obviously strategy matters and X and O matters, but when you have players, especially seniors that play like that, it makes your job a lot easier. Speaking of Jennifer Haley, wow, what a year she had. An All America honor was named the Atlanta 10th Player of the Year. Pretty much dominated in every game this season. What does a year like that mean to this program moving forward? Well, I think it's great because it just shows um, what this this program, what this staff is capable of doing with individual players, and certainly that's not our focus. Um, you know, our, our biggest focus is to is to win games for Charlotte and um, get into the postseason. And team accomplishments is what matter most to us. However, I will say that our our staff has a really big emphasis on individual improvement and individual player development. And I think uh, with Jen over the two years that we had her, just to see the way that she improved and got better and worked on her skill and uh, became the most dominant post player in our league and one of the best, in my opinion, in the country, um, was just remarkable to see. And certainly, you know, again, a lot of credit goes to her because she worked her tail off and she, she earned it. Um, but it's, it's just fun for our program to be able to be a part of that. As a former guard yourself, let's talk about the perimeter players a little bit. First, Nye Hammond stepped into the point guard role for, for a whole season for the first time as a collegian. What is your... How much did her development throughout the season enhance the team on the floor? Oh, it was uh, absolutely crucial. Uh, without Nye stepping up and becoming the point guard that we needed her to be, there's no way we win 26 games or, or accomplish half of what we accomplished this season. Uh, the thing about Nye is we always knew it was in her. Um, she's a skilled player. She's a capable player, very smart basketball IQ. Uh, has all the intangibles that you want in a point guard, and it was just a matter of her really coming into her own and, and developing the same confidence in herself that the coaching staff had in her. And you could see that blossom throughout the season. I mean, she worked hard throughout the summer to come into this season. Um, as our starting point guard, she made it an easy decision for me to put her in the lineup, and then she continued to earn that with her play and with her um, her just attitude and, and leadership with this team. Another key perimeter player was Hillary Sigmund as a threat from three-point territory. As a coach, how comforting is it to have weapons like that so teams were able to strictly focus on the low block? Yeah, it was really important for us. I mean, um, you know, each player on our team, they know their roles and they know the importance of their roles, and certainly you don't want to take away from anybody. But um, Hillary was big in terms of her ability to knock down the, the three and, and extend the defense and being somebody that the defense won't help off of. Um, you know, without her being that threat, it would have made it certainly much more difficult for Jen and Amanda down low. Um, and, and I thought Hillary had a fantastic season as a sophomore. She was pretty consistent. 
consistent. Um, you know, there wasn't many times where she shot the ball and we didn't think it was going in, and that's a pretty good feeling to have. The bench received a lot of playing time this year, including several key minutes and performances by the freshmen. With the majority of that overall group returning, how important was it to get them the game experience this year moving forward? I think it was, you know, really important. I mean, practice is important, um, but getting in games and having game experience, um, you know, you, you can't replicate that. And I think certainly the way that we went through the A-10 in terms of, um, you know, we didn't blow a lot of people out. We were in a lot of close games. We were in a lot of tight situations. And so it was a lot of situational experience that our players were able to get, our young kids were able to get. Even if it was only a few minutes, those few minutes, they learned real quickly how crucial those could be to our team and to the opportunity to win a game. And I think all those things together are going to make um, them much better players and certainly us a, a better team next year. Another player who will be back on the floor next year is Gabby Tyler, who had to sit out all this past season. How much will it mean to have her back and healthy as a post presence? Well, it would be huge. I mean, Gabby was a huge loss for our team this year, and I think uh, a lot of people overlook that. Uh, with how great of a season we had, uh, it was just tremendous to think that we did that without one of our best and most experienced players. And so, um, you know, that's something that we had to overcome. Uh, we worked really hard um, to overcome that. But uh, getting Gabby back next year will be crucial to our team's success. This year's team was able to be highly successful at home, a season, single season school record, 14 wins, and on the road as one of four teams nationally to finish unbeaten in the true away games. What was the formula to having success on both fronts since most teams manage one or the other but not both? I think, again, it goes back to our players um, having good leadership, having um, seniors that have that will to win. I mean, um, you know, talking about the road games, uh, we never went – into a row game and from a coach's perspective looked intimidated or nervous or uh, unprepared. I mean, our, our players looked confident. And, uh, you know, certainly our, our staff, I think, does a tremendous job. Uh, my assistant coaches do a tremendous job with our scouting reports and having our players prepared. But a lot of that comes down to our players' attitude and their will. And they were so determined to win games. I mean, it didn't matter where we played, uh, who we played. Um, they thought we were going to win, and, and we had certainly that same feeling at home. I mean, we, we lost a couple games early at home in the season. Uh, we talked about that as a group. We, we talked about how Halton Arena, we want it to be a place where people dread to come play, and our team really latched onto that, and I thought uh, really protected our home the way they should down the stretch of the year. Reaching the postseason is always a goal for this program, and this year was no different, doing it for the 11th straight season. On top of that, having all three WNIT games at home in front of the minor nations and that bonus. How do you put into words the support from minor nation, including the students, throughout the entire year into the postseason? It was incredible. Um, I'd certainly say that our students here at Charlotte uh, do a tremendous job coming out and supporting us and interacting with our players and and just being that six man type of uh, uh, feeling, you know, whenever we play. And uh, they really stepped it up for the WNIT and, and gave us an advantage. Uh, throughout the throughout that tournament that I know that I was personally very thankful for, but I know our players really were uh, as well. But, you know, and it's not just the students. The entire community, you know, came out and supported us. Um, we had great attendance all season long, and, and certainly that helps. I mean, it always helps when you have that type of environment um, to be able to protect your home court. Five new faces will join the program next season. How excited are you to get those players here on campus and get them back in May with the 49ers? We're very excited. I mean, we're we're thrilled about the recruiting class we're able to sign. I think we were able to we were able to bring in a lot of things that will that we needed um, that that we had big needs for and, and certainly talented players. I mean, we're going to be young next year, so I'll tell uh, tell Niner Nation right now be patient with us early. Uh, but we're going to have a lot of talent, and it's just going to be a matter of us getting that talent together, um, getting everybody on the same page, and, and moving forward. And you know, I think it's still going to be a really exciting team to watch play. Any final thoughts on the year and looking forward to next year? Well, you know, it's just, again, it was a year that was so exciting and, and, and so much to be proud of. And uh, one that I know personally I'll probably never forget as a head coach, the sacrifices that our players made to have one of the best seasons in our history. And for that I'm so thankful for. And, um, you know, we'll always remember that. But certainly, you know, looking forward to next season and continuing to build um, – this program, uh, build on the tradition that we've had, build on you know what we're trying to do here as a staff going into my third season. I, I think it's going to be really exciting and we'll be different. You know, Obviously, with who we lost in Jen and Amanda and Jay, we're going to look a lot different. But that's the challenge of it and that's the fun and, and certainly we're looking forward to that. All right, 
All right, thank you for your time today, Karen. We look forward to more updates in the off-season leading up to the program's return to conference USA next fall. Thanks, Travis.